I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we look into the solution of the question which was posted yesterday. Question number one. For the series 1 minus x to the power of minus 2, where absolute value of x is less than 1, which of the following statements is or are false? A. The series can be approximated as the sum of series r x to the power of r minus 1, where r is equal to 1 to infinity. B. It is a converging infinite series. C. The series can be written as 1 minus 2x plus 3x square minus 4x cubed plus so on. D is the sum of the given series is 1 over 1 minus x whole square. Thanks a lot for your excellent response. Now let's look into the solution of this question. Let's review the basics first and then we'll get straight into the concepts of solving such a integrated problem. So generally, you know that a binomial series is, if I have a plus b to the power of n, we could always write this as nc0 a to the power of n plus nc1 a to the power of uh, n minus 1 b plus nc2 a to the power of n minus 2 b square plus so on right general term being ncr a to the power of n minus r b to the power of r right uh, plus so on and the last term being ncn a to the power of 0 b to the power of n correct? so what you notice is that there are n plus 1 terms and the general term is r plus 1th term, right? The sum of the degrees is always n. Now, the special case which we are talking about is when uh, we could write a function as 1 plus x to the power of n, in which case absolute value of x is less than 1. So it is, in this case, a converging series. And it could be expanded as, now writing down the coefficients in a simpler form, we get this as 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared uh, plus, let me write the third term here, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus so on. Now as you see, if x is less than 1, so we have higher powers. So this series is in ascending powers. Powers of x. Right? And as the power increases, it is approaching 0. Right? So so x to the power of n, where n approaches infinitely large, this approaches 0, right? So the higher powers means lower values. So most of the time, we could, we could uh, approximate the series to few terms. That's the whole idea, right? Now, with that background, let's uh, begin to solve these questions one by one. Part A is that the series can be approximated as r x to the power of r minus 1, where r is from 1 to infinity. So, we just learned that 1 plus x to the power of n can actually be written as 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus so on, right? 
Now, in our case, what we have is 1 minus x to the power of minus 2. So, n is minus 2 and x is really minus x. So, we are going to substitute this here and then rewrite. So, what we get here is 1 plus, now n is minus 2, right? So, we get minus 2 and x is minus x, correct? Plus, we are writing now, instead of n as minus 2 times minus 2 minus 1 over 2 factorial x is minus x whole square plus now we have minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 times minus 2 minus 2 over 3 factorial which is 3 times 2 and this is minus x whole cube plus so on now, as these terms powers are increasing and the absolute value of x is less than 1, they can be neglected, right? So, I could actually, let me rewrite this. Let's now multiply. So, when we multiply, you get 1 plus 2x. My negative, negative becomes positive, right? And uh, here, we have 2 times, this is 3, and 2 and 2 cancel. So, we get 3 x square right so we get 3x square plus the next one here 3 factorial is 3 times 2 we have x cube 1 2 3 neg and 4 negative signs that means positive and what we get here is 2 times 3 times 4 right so when you divide by 3 we get 4 so we get 4 uh, yeah 4x cube yeah and so on right so we are not taking into consideration the other terms which are uh, very very small but anyway what you see is a series and this is an infinite series which definitely uh, can be written as r x to the power of r minus 1 where r is 1 so you can see that the first term here is 1 right and then each is product of the term number 2, 3, 4. As far as x is concerned, the exponent is 1 less than the term number. And therefore, this can be written as sigma r equals to 1 to infinity, right? x r to the power of x to the power of r minus 1. So that means this statement is correct. Now, we are actually looking for false statements, right? So, you should not circle this one. This is a correct statement. But definitely, what we have got here is a series which has all positive terms. So, C is definitely wrong for us, correct? The series can be written as this is incorrect. We don't have these negative terms. All are positive. We also see that the series is converging. So, that is also a correct statement. Perfect. So, with this, we uh, came to part solution. Now, let's look into the last part where we'll try to see how to find the sum of the series, right? So, now we'll look into the sum of the series. I will actually like you to pause the video and then find the sum of the series. So, basically, the series which is 1 minus x to the power of minus 2. We wrote this just now as what? We wrote this as sum of all these terms, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, right? So let me rewrite this as 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus so on, right? Or, or you could write this as the series given with sigma notation perfect now i would like you to pause the video and uh, write down and check whether the sum is 1 over 1 minus x whole square or not right so let us say that the sum of the series is this is sum is s right so let's say s is sum is equals to 1 plus 2x plus 3x square uh, plus 4x cube uh, plus so on okay now, if I multiply by x, the whole sum, then what do I get? I get x plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed plus 4x to the power of 4 
and so on right okay now if I do one s let's say these are my two equations right so this is my equation number one right and this is my equation number two now if I do equation number one minus equation number two what do I get I get the sum minus x times the sum as equal to so 1 minus x uh, uh, I mean 2x minus x is do like this 1 minus when you do this so you get 2x minus x is plus x do you see that and now we'll do 3x squared minus 2x so what do you get you actually get uh, 3 minus 2 is 1 so you get this as x square. Similarly, here we get x cubed plus so on. So as you continue, you see it becomes a geometric series, right? So this is a geometric series or geometric progression in which the first term a is 1 and each term is being multiplied by x. So r is x and thirdly, this is an infinite series. And therefore, the sum of this series is what? Well, the sum of series is 1 over 1 minus x, which is, if I take s common here, I get 1 minus x here. Does make sense to you? Clear? So from here, we can say that the sum of this series is basically 1 over 1 minus x whole square, right? So that's the formula for the sum of infinite series, right? Uh, which is the sum of the series is equals to a over 1 minus r. Is it clear? So for an infinite series. So that is how we have used this particular formula to get the answer and then sum is this. That means this statement is also true. Perfect. So that is how we really solve this question. So if you look into this particular question, we had uh, four parts to this question. And clearly, we found that the most of the parts are correct, except for one, which is this. So C is the option which is not correct or which is false for the given series. So I hope with this you understand how to solve an integrated question which could be a very important question for any competition into an excellent university. I hope that makes sense and the objective of our Global Map Institute is mainly to get you through such examinations and place you at the best of the places. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.